Welcome to Strip Coverlet, where we squeeze the bigger picture out of literature. I'm Adrian Fort, and we are here uh, for another poetry discussion, a poetry discussion which will take place in three separate playlists here on the channel. Number one, obviously, being the poetry discussion playlist. Number two, being the National Poetry Month 2021 playlist, during which I will be doing a poetry discussion every day of the month here in April. Uh, so stay tuned for that if you are into something such as a poetry discussion, and if you're not, what in the hell are you doing here? But the third playlist in which this poetry discussion will appear is New Hampshire by Robert Frost. Uh, I'm going to be going poem by poem through New Hampshire by Robert Frost. I did skip New Hampshire, the very first one, because it is a long one. And we're going to uh, find some way to do that um, or some other time to do that. So here we are with the second poem in the series called The Census Taker. And it reads as such. I came an errand one cloud-blowing evening to a slab-built black paper-covered house of one room and one window and one door, the only dwelling in a waste cut over a hundred square miles rounded in the mountains, and that not dwelt in and and that not dwelt in now by men or women, it never had been dwelt in though by women. So what is this? I make a sorrow of. I came as a census taker to the waste to count the people in it and found none, none in, a, in the hundred miles, none in the house where I came last with some hope, but not much. After hours looking over the cliffs and emptiness flayed to the very stone, I found no people that dared show themselves, none not in hiding from the outward eye the time was autumn, but how anyone could tell the time of year when every tree that could have dropped a leaf was down itself and nothing but the stump of it was left, now bringing out its rings in sugar of pitch, and every tree stood up, and every tree up stood a rotting trunk <clears throat> without a single leaf to spend on autumn or branch to whistle after what was spent, perhaps the wind the more without the help of breathing trees said something of the time of year or day the way it swung a door forever off the latch as if rude men passed in and slammed it shut each behind each one behind him for the next one to open for himself i counted nine i had no right to count but this was this was dreamy unofficial counting before I made the tent across the threshold. Where was my supper? Where was anyone's? No lamp was lit. Nothing was on the table. The stove was cold. The stove off the, the stove was off the chimney, and down by the side where it lacked a leg. The people that had loudly passed the door were people to ear but not the eye were people to the ear but not the eye. They were not on the table with their elbows. They were not sleeping in the shelves of bunks. I saw no men there and no bones of men there. I armed myself against such bones as might be with the pitch blackened stub of an axe handle. I picked up off the, star off the straw dust covered floor, not bones, but the ill-fitted window rattled. The door was still in, was still because I held it shut while I thought what to do that could be done about the house, about the people not there. This house in one year fallen to decay filled me with no less sorrow than the house has fallen to ruin in 10,000 years where Asia wedges Africa from Europe. Nothing was left to do that I could see unless to find that there was no more there. There was no one there to declare the cliffs too far for echo. The place is desert, and let whoso lurks in silence, if in this he is aggrieved, break silence now or forever be silent. Let him say what it should not be declared so, the melancholy of having to count souls where they grow fewer and fewer every year is extreme where they shrink to none at all. It must be I want life to go on living. So we don't really get any clue as to the speaker's sentiments until the very end. 
the melancholy of having to count souls where they grow fewer and fewer every year is extreme where they shrink to none at all it must be i want life to go on living this is telling us that this census taker is um at least in love with life if not living so we get a lot of melancholy from robert frost we get a lot of melancholy in uh, modern popular poetry in general Robert Frost is really good at doing it. But here we have um, our speaker ruling melancholy. We have our speaker who does not want the melancholy. He wants life to keep on going. Um, we're assuming it's a he. I'm assuming it's a he strictly because Frost is the, the author and the speaker. Uh, but also because it seems, the poem seems to circle around the idea of an idea of masculinity and an idea of femininity. A hundred the only dwelling in a waste cut over a hundred square miles rounded in the mountains and that not dwelt in now by men or women. It never had been dwelt in by women. So what is this that I make sorrow of? never had been dwelt in by women. This had been a house inhabited strictly by men. And there's something wrong with it. What is wrong with it? What was wrong with it? What was in disrepair during the time it was inhabited? We get a little mention of that. We get a mention of that on the kissing page to this, where our speaker is saying... Um, after he's talking about the rude men who would pass through the door and slam it shut, where was my supper? Where was anyone's? Uh, there's an old saying that a woman makes a house a home. Um, and oftentimes, in symbolism, we identify the home with the homemaker, we identify the home with the wife, we identify the home with something feminine. But here we have Robert Frost identifying this as a falsehood. If for no other reason than the fact that the inhabitants of this house had been strictly men. And men have their role in the house. Women do too. According to Frost, that's what we're doing with this poem. It's the commentary being made here, I think. Or at least something that could be read into it. Where was my supper? Where was anyone's? Well, there were no women. And because there were no women, something that fell apart during, inhabit during habitation, during the time where this house was inhabited. The stove was cold, but... The stove was off the chimney and down by one side where it lacked a leg. That's the sort of thing that doesn't happen once a home is already in disrepair. That's the sort of thing, you know, like a light bulb burns out and you never get around to fixing it before your lease is up. Um, this is one of those little things that has gone wrong and not been fixed. Not been fixed because the stove was not all that important to the people who were inhabiting this house, those men. But because the men were no longer there, their role in this house as well fell fallow. Um, in the fact that it was abandoned and in disrepair. What is the man's role in the house? Well, we got to fix stuff. This is more of a classical type of uh, viewpoint, for sure. But it is acknowledging that there are roles by uh, both of the genders to be had in the house. This is a commentary, uh, perhaps, on the fact that... Um, so what we're doing is we're saying that without uh, this fusion... 
the species isn't propagating and moving forward. That's what the census taker, someone whose job it is to count people, that's what the census taker is upset about. Um, an empty house. A life abandoned. Meaning which has been forsaken. Not the only meaning, reproduction, but meaning for sure. There are all sorts of, I mean, that, that is a valid meaning to life. Always has been, always will be, for propagation of the species. But it's not just the lovemaking part, right? That I think that's part of the commentary being made here. Um, there is so much to that. There is so much upkeep to that. And there are two sides to that upkeep. Um, and that is what I think is being commented on in the census taker, the second poem after New Hampshire, in New Hampshire by Robert Frost. Uh, if you like this sort of thing, it really helps me out here on the channel. If you give a thumbs up to this video, if you hit that like button. Um, I do poetry discussions every Monday, but here in the month of April, I'm doing a poetry discussion every day of the month. So if you enjoy this sort of thing, I hope to see you back for the next one. But also there's a link to my personal channel to be found in the description below.